Uh, the AMX M4, now 54, the new tier X French collectible. However, it ain't easy to get hold of. But is it really worth your while trying to get this thing? Well, let's find out. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to be looking at this tank, the AMX M4 Mil 54. It is the new event tank that you're going to be able to get only from the snow globes, which we'll get to later. It, as I said, it's a French tier 10 collectible and as you can see, it ain't too shabby. Now there was a lot of hype over this saying it was mega OP, mega broken. Well, it isn't. It is just a good, all-round, rather balanced tier 10 tank. It's got fantastic armor, which we'll get to in a bit, but only on the turret. It's got quite a long reload. It's got absolutely zero gun elevation and only 8 degrees of depression. But that 8 degrees is not too bad. It churns out pretty decent damage, and it's pretty good penetration-wise. The load time, just over 12 seconds, pretty long but it's manageable. I mean, it's not a bad tank. However, it ain't that easy to get your paws onto this thing. It comes in this event, the Yuletide Express, and you've got to get it in a snow globe. Therein lies the problem, because getting the snow globes ain't as easy as you think. Now you can get them by opening one of those Christmas boxes for 1500 gold and you will get a charm for the amx and you need 10 charms basically so i mean that's it's it's quite an expensive tank and there's no guarantee you're gonna get a snow globe in that box so you know it's a bit hit and miss now if you want to get a snow globe just one snow globe and you want to rush through it's gonna cost you twenty two thousand gold it's quite expensive but if you do get it, well, this is how I normally load it out. Now you can see I've got uh, 33 AP and 20 odd HPCR and 7 HE. That's the consumables I take. And those are the provisions I am taking with it um, because I just want the, the crew to be better. And this is my equipment loadout, although I've got, gun, I've got the supercharge there, which is not correct. It's actually the enhanced lane gun, the, the enhanced lane device. So I don't have the, uh, the, the supercharger, that's, that's incorrect. So you'll see there it's switched around to the enhanced gun lane device. But this is just my standard loadout for a heavy tank, to be perfectly, perfectly honest with you. And it suits me fine. I mean, I just want those extra calibrated shells. No point getting the uh, extra hit, uh, sorry, I get the extra hit points and all that sort of stuff. But what is this tank like armor-wise? Well, this is what the render looks like in armor inspector it's a pretty funky looking tank but as you can see it's got a pretty big head and that can be its undoing you can see here the armor profile frontally it's very good bottom plate bit there mantle it very tough front of the turret quite nice and the front upper glacius plate is quite good that turret however is large guys now i'm going to stick it off against an is7 as you can see, the cupolas are pretty easy to pen. The cheeks, if you rotate the turret too much, they become open. But it's a good side scraper. You can see here, you can side scrape in it. You've got to keep that bottom hull covered, though. But the problem is, as I said, if you turn the turret too much, its big fat head turns around and that can be penned. Eight degrees of gun depression? Well, is it any good? Well, yes, it is. This thing can hold a ridge line. Here I am on Vineyard holding a ridgeline and it can do it quite nicely. Um, it's got a good gun. As I said, I haven't struggled with penetration. I haven't bounced much in it. Churning out on average about 460 damage. It's not bad. It's got a long reload, 12 seconds, but it's not that long. And, you know, like I said, eight degrees of gun depression isn't that bad at all. It's manageable. It's not awful. So... You know, I like it. I think it's a nice tank. The only downside to this tank is how you can get your paws on it, as I said. Now, you need a snow globe. 
and you can get the Christmas boxes, 1500 gold, but there's no guarantee you're going to get a snow globe. If you do get a snow globe and you don't get the tank straight off, you will get another tank and you'll get a charm. It will take you 10 charms to get your paws into this tank. Now, if you were to get a charm every Christmas box, then it's going to cost you about 1500 gold, 15,000 gold, sorry, to get your paws on this tank. But it ain't going to work that way. Now, I was quite lucky, to be honest with you. I got this tank, firstly on my press account, and you will see a game on the press account. This is me on my main account. Um, but I was quite lucky yesterday. I managed to get it because I got quite a few. I, I had a few snow globes. I had about five, I think. And I managed to get my paws onto this tank. But I was lucky, guys. And there is a danger that you could be spending 1,500 gold on these Christmas present boxes and you'll never get the snow globe. And if you don't get the globe, the chance of you getting the tank are pretty, pretty slim. Um, so it, it's, it's really, look at the draw, to be honest with you. I, as I said, I was lucky. I, I managed to get the tank to drop after like the sixth snow globe or something. But that's still, you know, that, 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 that's still a lot of snow globes. And you know, I, I'm just disappointed that it came that way. And there's no easy or there's no really easy way for you to get your paws on a snow globe but that's the point i mean it's a tier 10 collector and it's not meant to be easy to get to be honest with you as i said it's not op it's just a nice all-round heavy and i like it i do like it i like its play style it's it's not as slow as the super heavies in the game as in mobility wise the mobility is quite nice it's quite nice all down if I were going to compare it to an, uh, any other tank, I'd say it's, it's similar to the Chieftain Mark VI. And I say similar, it's not the same, obviously. It's similar insofar as it's got pretty good damage, it's got a pretty good reload, and it's got pretty good turret armour. You can't really frontline this thing, because it's, its lower hull is easily penetrable, and so is the sides. And the reload just doesn't allow you to sort of be super aggressive in it, to be perfectly frank. But it is a nice tank. And it's it's a second line support heavy rather than a super heavy. And as I said, I, I consider it similar to the Chieftain Mark VI, a similar type of play style. Now, a lot of people may disagree with me there, but we all have our different ways of playing this tank. Now the thing I like about this tank, I mean I haven't played many games in it, I've played it on my press account for about 5 games and i played it on my main account about 1 game and I'm averaging about 3k in damage. Now, I mean that's not bad, okay it's a new tank and people don't know how to counter it yet. In, in that game there we did just over 3k, we got a first class and I'm quite happy with that. I am quite happy with that in a new tank. Okay, I didn't get the mastery, but hey, you can't always get a mastery. This is me rolling out Normandy in my on my press account in the same tank. And, you know, it can hold the ridge, it's got good rotation, the turret's not overly slow in coming round. It's not a bad credit earner either. It's got decent-ish penetration. It's got decent-ish you know, if you're knocking out 500 alpha damage on your main rounds in a super heavy, it's not bad. And as you can see, the mobility is pretty, pretty nice indeed. That was 500 on the AP. It comes with AP as its premium ammunition. So it's like premium armor piercing. But I mean, the gun I aiming reticle is quite nice. The gun is quite accurate. In the, it, overall, I think it's a beautiful little tank. I'm still gutted that it's a snow globe tank, but there are reasons for that. The gun elevation, as you can see here, is just absolutely shockingly bad. And it is shockingly bad, to be fair. I mean, you're not really going to be able to hit many things up higher than you. I think it's about, what, 15 degrees elevation. It's, it's pretty, pretty poor. But it does get around the battlefield nicely. It's not it's not overly slow for a mega heavy. It's, as I said, I mean, the reload of t just over 12 seconds isn't... Dis it, it's not a disaster. It's not difficult to play with. It's nice. You don't struggle with penetration, as I say. And it's just a nice overall tank. I mean... 
there's a lot of detractors out there. A lot of people think that this thing was going to be broken. There was a lot of talk about it being broken. There's a lot of talk about it being an auto reloader. It's not. It's, it's single shot. And it's certainly not OP and it's certainly not broken in the slightest. It's just, I think it's balanced actually. But it is a nice addition. I would have preferred it if it would have been a tech tree tank or, or, or something along those lines. But just because it's in the snow globes now doesn't mean to say it's never going to come out again. Uh, it would be like the T22, I would have thought. Although, unlike the T22, this thing is not going to change and disrupt the meta too much. But whilst it may be in snow globes now, give it a few months, it may come out in crates, and you may be able to pick it up there if you're not lucky enough to get it in the snow globe. So, you know, just because it's out now doesn't mean to say you have to sort of get your paws on it immediately. And we've so far just done over 3,000 damage in this game. Unfortunately, this is a heartbreaker. I'm going to spoil the show now. We've not done too badly in it. Um, as you can see, we've lost quite a few HP. Now we've only got half our hit points left. But it is a nice tank. Um, had I, you know, I sent to the guys in my clan yesterday and on my Discord. It's a nice tank. Uh, the teams yesterday weren't exactly brilliant, but it's a nice tank. And had there would have been more support from the team in this game, maybe it would have been a bit better. But I make a mistake here. I pop out too quickly onto the M103. I've managed to take them up, but now I'm one shot to the rest of the tanks. And again, you know, I'm, I, I, I was completely forgetting this armor profile, trying to get the E100. E100 gets me. We churn out 5,400 damage. Not too shabby. We only bounced 420. We lost the game. Uh, a couple of errors on my part that led to losing the game, but we got the mastery, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, that is the AMX M454. It's a nice little tank. So, anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the AMX. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. Um, if you've got any decent replays, wing them across to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com, or upload them to my Discord server. I'd like to say a big shout out to both my members on YouTube and my Patreons, who without you, it would be a lot harder to do these videos. And to my subscribers, I recently hit 5,000 subscribers, so massive thank you to you guys out there. Until the next time then, guys, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. And if I don't see you before, have a very, very happy Christmas.